13. A super fog is being blamed for a highway crash in Louisiana that killed seven people and over 25 people taken to hospitals. ABC's Trevor Alt has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, stunning images from a frightening scene Monday on this Louisiana highway. Seven people dead and nearly 30 others injured after a multi-vehicle pileup caused by a weather phenomenon known as super fog. People were screaming for help. 90% of the cars that were surrounding me were hit. More than 150 cars colliding, starting fires on the road, leaving cars burnt out and drivers stranded along I-55 outside New Orleans. This time-lapse video showing the dramatic approach as it rolled across the region. Rescue teams scouring the scene, searching for any remaining victims. Our troopers and emergency first responders have been working diligently up there to not only investigate all of the crashes that are involved, but also clear the roadway. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on what caused these dangerous road conditions. With your GMA First Look, I'm Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. 514, 74 degrees. Up next, a first look at Instagram testing a feed that only shows posts from Meta verified users. Plus, how Tinder is letting users invite family and friends to recommend matches. Imagine a world with no drama. I haven't signed Jody's card yet. At 4imprint, finding the promotional products you need to create a memorable moment is an easy mission. Our expert team will take care of every detail to make your success a certainty. Take the drama out of ordering promotional products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. Bye-bye, cough. Later, chest congestion. Hello, 12 hours of relief. 12 hours? Not coughing? Hashtag still not coughing? Mucin XDM gives you 12 hours of relief from chest congestion in any type of cough, day or night. Mucin XDM. <gasps> it's comeback season. Amazon is going password free with pass key support on its website and app. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, you can now sign into your Amazon account without your password. Amazon just launched pass key support for its shopping website and app. So users can log in with their face ID or their fingerprint. The pass keys are currently available on iOS devices and Android support is coming soon. Next, Instagram is testing a feature that lets users see posts from verified users only. It appears as an option under following and favorites when you hit the Instagram logo at the top of the app. Instagram considers it a new way for businesses and creators to get discovered. And Tinder users do not have to make those tough choices alone anymore. A feature on the dating app allows your friends and family to chime in. Loved ones can suggest potential partners and they do not have to have their own Tinder profiles to provide their opinion. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Rhiannon and Allie. Have a great day. In other words, your mother's going to be <laughs> yeah. Yeah. watching. She's a beautiful girl. You need to be. Yes. Nothing, <laughs> as I said during the commercial, nothing's wrong about that whatsoever, right? No, yeah. no not at you all. Know. Hey, look, Steven's here. Hey. Hi, Steven. Hey, Mark's hey. here. Hey, yeah, we're all here. Hi. Uh, yeah, guys, it has been, uh, I feel like we've all kind of been off and on with our mm -hmm. schedules. But lately, we're on now. But we're now on, yeah, so yeah. we ha are going to get through this week, and thankfully yeah. our morning commute is off to a pretty good start, as you just saw from behind us. Those trans guide cameras aren't capturing a whole lot, just a whole lot of pavement. You see it out there, 37 at South Cross. We have a pretty easy easy start uh, for our early morning drive, but 37 at the Alamo Dome, one of our favorite shots, as you all are familiar with. We're just seeing a few more vehicles out there as we get closer to 6 a.m., but I wouldn't say you need to rush out the door. Just plan your commute ahead of time because as you see right there on the map, plenty of green on the screen, but there is still plenty of overnight work taking place. This should be wrapping up here along I-10 over on the east side of Bear County where we have that road work that began yesterday. Remember, this is going to take us all the way up to the end of the work week Friday, October 27th. This work is overnight, 8 at night 
night all the way to six in the morning. So we still have about 40 minutes to go, but we'll see a single eastbound main lane closure during that time from Greytown Road to File Road. Scan the QR code if you have your phones right now. That takes you to our traffic page. There is a whole lot happening this week in and around the Alamo City. Uh, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, Mike, on my way to work. I saw a little bit, I guess, a light drizzle, some sprinkles on my windshield, maybe one or two windshield wipes, and it was gone. Yeah, and that's what we had yesterday, and some folks are going to be seeing that. Some folks are actually seeing a couple of showers. Going to show you that in a moment. Beautiful view, though, when the uh, clouds kind of broke a little bit last night with the moon over there in Hondo. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Not a lot of breaks in the clouds this morning. We'll have some sunshine. It's going to be almost identical to yesterday, and that's the way we are starting off. First of all, out here to the uh, west, right around, oh, say, Concan, Lakey, we've got uh, some fairly decent downpours. These few spots right here, Sabinal, everything sliding up to the north, almost northeast, and just to the east of Lakey. Not anything torrential, and they are moving along at a fairly decent clip so it's not going to just sit in one spot. These will continue to work their way through western Bandera County up in toward western Kerr County and then a couple of more off to the east from there. And here in town, as you mentioned, we've had a few little light sprinkles and yeah, you got to kind of squint to see a few of them out there. There may be one or two of them right there around Alamo Heights as of right now and just near downtown. But again, not much. And it's just going to be kind of scattered variety throughout the rest of today as we are seeing right now. Again, a repeat of yesterday. Mid 70s, low to mid 70s on average around the area. A couple of 60s out there. And it is breezy right now. Yesterday we had a fairly decent breeze, and we're going to continue with that not only this morning, but also later on this afternoon. We've got wind gusts up to 22 out there at Lost Maple. So we will have a couple of gusts around throughout the day. So those few scattered showers around here. Once again, temperatures really aren't going to be moving anywhere this morning. And then later on this afternoon, we only gain roughly 10. Again, I compared to last week at this time, we were gaining 30, 35 degrees because of the dry air. But the cloud cover and the humidity don't give you those big swings in temperatures. Computer model throughout the day. Again, it's not overly bullish as far as rain is concerned. A few scattered showers here and there. One or two peaks of sunshine, otherwise warm and humid. And that's going to be the situation tomorrow. Then tomorrow night, and there's going to be a disturbance kind of sliding on in here. That's going to give us a better chance for some rain, especially in portions of the hill country, and that's going to go in through early Thursday morning. So we'll have to watch out for potentially some heavier downpours out there in parts of the hill country. Humidity going to stay very humid all the way through the rest of the week and the weekend. And then look what happens on Monday. Humidity drops down. We got that big front moving on through here, and this one is definitely going to be pulling down some colder air, and that's going to give us. Uh, temperatures that we haven't seen around here in a long time and also some uh, some wet conditions. So here's what it looks like for today. We are going to make it up to 84 degrees with again a few scattered showers around the area and same thing tomorrow. Then tomorrow night, early Thursday, especially in the hill country, potentially some heavier rain. We stay very consistent then through the weekend. Rain chances kind of taper off a little bit over the weekend. That front comes through late Sunday night. This is the timing as of right now and a couple of computer models are long range ones are agreeing on that as of right now. And looking at some of the numbers going with mid 50s starting off and steady or dropping throughout the day, breezy and wet. It's going to be cold right now, chilly on Halloween. As far as any rain, still too early to tell. It depends on what we're looking at as of right now. All right, so, so you haven't wanted us to get excited about any cold fronts. And you said you would this, authorize this excitement. one right. This one right now is looking like, as I like to say, the doozy, the so. whopper. Uh, yeah. OK, so, OK, so, well, very good. A, a cold, chilly Halloween. Yes, indeed. Thanks for your approval. <laughs> I, I was waiting for it. That's, I didn't want to go there. be excited. Yes, 524, 74 degrees and some big changes are coming to Morgan's Wonderland. Coming up next, a first look at the brand new additions. Morgan's Wonderland here in San Antonio getting ready to close its doors at the end of the month, but it's only temporary to make room for a bigger, better park. Morgan's Wonder go a $6 million expansion, its largest expansion yet. It's adding four new attractions and taking the destination park design for all families to a new level of fun. Our Max Massey with the inside look and why families can't wait to come back. Meet William. Oh. A big fan of Morgan's Wonderland. I'm a 
foods as me. The beautiful thing about Morgan's Moorland is it's for everybody. It's built for everyone, but we have taken special attention to ensure that our friends with special needs can do everything. Gordon Hartman started Morgan's Wonderland almost 14 years ago, a place where his daughter Morgan and a place where William's brother Ethan could play. It has meant really the world to us because we we have a son who's 30 who has a disability and a daughter who's four. So we've been in this world a long time and we've, we've lived all over the country and never have we experienced anything like Morgan's Wonderland. Becky West's children, Sam and Luna, they also love Morgan's Wonderland. Luna loves the sand <laughs> and she also loves the carousel. And when the West family learned of the new additions, they were thrilled. It's just so exciting that they're adding on, that there's the vision for that. Obviously, there's a need for that. The new additions include a 4D theater, a boat ride, a zip line, and a magic bike ride. And it's time to, to not only spruce it up a little bit, but also add some incredible rides. So with the addition of new rides and a $6 million expansion, the park is going to have to be closed down from November to March. But when it reopens, the hope is there's going to be more smiles and more memories. Maybe they play differently, walk differently. And that's okay. And it's so fun to come here to Morgan's Wonderland and watch that happen. One stinky cheese. As for fish, Sam, Luna, William, and Ethan, fish, they seemingly can't get enough. How much is that? Hey, devil. Max Massey, KSAT yeah. 12 News. Very much. <laughs> Love it. Right now it's uh, 529, 74 degrees. And top House Republicans are pushing to elect the new speaker tonight. Just to have a look at the eight candidates that want that position. Plus, what you need to know about a dog food recall that could make both dogs and humans sick. Years removed from losing 100, the Rangers have won the pennant. And the World Series runs through Texas after the Rangers took Game 7 last night against the Astros. How it all went down and Houston, who they could play in the Fall Classic. House Speaker chaos continues in Washington with eight Republicans vying for the speakership. We're going to have to figure out how to get our act together. I mean, big boys and big girls have got to quit making excuses and we just got to go get it done. Our lawmakers are changing things to avoid a government shutdown on November 17th. And trending now on KSET.com this morning, a man originally charged with capital murder is given an eight-year plea deal on a lesser charge. Manuel Cantu was one of three people accused of taking part in a murder-for-hire plot in February of 2019 that ended in the death of Mike Bettis. For a plea deal, the state proceeded with the lesser charge that Cantu entered a plea of no contest. You can read why the state waived that capital murder charge online right now. Some of you are getting some decent rain this morning west and northwest of San Antonio. Mike will take a closer look on radar in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, the 24th of October. Yeah, thanks for joining us and welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back. So you got a lot of sun over the last few days. Wow, I tell you yeah. what, the <laughs> Formula One race in Austin was awesome, but man, it was hot. People were really having to pace themselves yeah. and hydrate. Uh, well, we were experts by now, though. October, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And how many people you said over the three days? Over 400,000 people Ooh. at Circuit of the wow. Americas oh over Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Wow. That is a whole... It's a whole community. lot of folks. Yeah, it's yeah. a whole lot of folks out there. So, uh, how much? How many does it hold? Because you said you know coming and going and all that. That was over the course. Of, so it's over a hundred thousand. I mean, hundred fifty thousand. Oh, easily, yeah. Because there's stands throughout, and then of course there's general okay. admission sections everywhere. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, this summer almost broke all of us. But I think we were all prepared for it this this past weekend. Yeah. And this week we've been talking about how it's just kind of warm and humid mm -hmm. out there, and got some showers and everything. But just wait, you're gonna like the seven day forecast. One week from yesterday I should say and as right now we do have a little bit of uh, some light rain out there not much um, out to the west as Mark was alluding to we're going to show you that in a second 75 degrees so we are the normal low is in the upper 50s so 15 almost 20 degrees above normal a lot of humidity when I mean, you've got dew points up in the low 70s and a decent breeze out of the southeast it was breezy yesterday and it's going to remain that way throughout the day today here's the uh, the decent rain that we were talking about and I want to just uh, 
click one little button over here, pardon me, and um, not everything, not everyone I should say, is seeing rain as of right now, but in those uh, those few spots, we are getting a, a, a good shower or two, moving along at a good clip, so therefore, nothing is just uh, kind of sitting in one spot, but as you can see, western Bandera County, and then heading right up there, northern Valley County, and heading in toward Kerr County, maybe getting some of those in Kerrville. That's the, the the most impressive, I should say, as far as rain is concerned here in town. Well, we've got a couple of showers a little bit closer in right there, just heading in toward Castroville, a couple of little uh, light spots and nothing is really showing up as of right now. There may be, well, you kind of zoom in up there around Hollywood Park, a few of these little sprinkly showers, one or two of them just to the east of downtown and then a few off to the east. But again, not much out there and it's going to be the situation throughout the morning where maybe a couple little sprinkles just enough to make the roads kind of damp temperatures. Everybody's very consistent. It's going to stay very consistent all morning long. Thanks again to the cloud cover. Thanks to the very high humidity out there with these dew points well up there in the 70s. Get used to that because that's not going to be changing over the course of the rest of the week and going into the weekend. A lot of allergens, but everything is on the low side as of right now and temperature this morning may fluctuate a degree or two. Warm, humid, a couple of showers out there. Southeasterly wind, 10, 20 miles per hour. And then later on this afternoon, up into the mid 80s. So we're still going to be four or five degrees above normal on average around the area. A couple of scattered showers, a few storms here and there. Only a 30% chance for some rain, and it will be breezy, as I mentioned. Same thing tomorrow. Better rain chance tomorrow night. It's going into the weekend. Temperatures don't change. Then we got a big front coming through to start next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen. Anything big going on out there? No, just a little bit more traffic, Mike. It's pretty early, so we don't see a whole lot of issues out there, which is great. So any of those early bird commuters will pretty much have a treat out there as they get their morning commute rolling. 281 at St. Pedro and 1604 at Petrenko. Our morning is off to a decent start. Now, bear this in mind, we did have some of that overnight construction along I-10 over on the east side of Bear County. That should be in the clearing stages, and I'm going to keep a close eye on other spots that may uh, produce some congestion for us. But behind me, it's going to be pretty quiet as we get this commute rolling. Taking a look at travel times, if you're rolling on over here to San Antonio from Pleasanton along I-37, it's pleasant. 26 minutes along those northbound lanes. 28 to usual drive time along US-90 eastbound from Castroville. Perfect time to head out the door. And that arrival from Lytle should be about 15 minutes along I-35 northbound. So nothing out of the ordinary here, but I will keep a close eye on the roadways and I'll have more updates for you coming up in the next few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. While the color orange may mean fun at Halloween, people in one neighborhood say they're sick of it, especially when it comes to orange construction cones. Neighbors say two big road projects have been causing them a big inconvenience. Our Katrina Weber is live at one of the problem zones, the Walters Street Bridge. And Katrina, is there an end in sight? Well, we are told that, yes, there is an end in sight. Now, let me just tell you that people here say that uh, to have this bridge shut down, a major corridor to St. Phillips College, as well as uh, some of the homes here off of Walter Street, is a problem for months. But they say their backup route has also been driving them mad. Regardless of the speed limit, these drivers are going nowhere fast, unless they can find a way around a roadblock or more correctly, a blocked bridge on Walter Street, just south of I-35. Wow, it's been going on for a long time, and even when I was driving, I had to go down to the next exit. Vanessa Johnson and her granddaughter take the bridge by foot these days, their best route to a school bus stop. It takes forever to like walk all over the bridge, and plus, like other people need to drive through here. It's bad. We got to come down New Braunfels, come all the way back up this way. Angela Gardner has never driven the bridge during her six months living here. TxDOT shut it down back in February for resurfacing. We went up and we milled um, to, uh, some of the old uh, foundation off of it, and we are doing a new concrete overlay on it. Spokeswoman Tanya Brown says the work was supposed to have been completed in August, just a few days after we took this tour by drone, showing the patched up bumpy surface she told us a contractor was set to start pouring concrete. And then we'll open that bridge, reopen that bridge um, closer to Thanksgiving. Until then, detour is the word for drivers. All signs point to this street, New Braunfels Avenue, being a way to get around that bridge closure. 
But as that sign shows, it hasn't exactly been smooth sailing here either. This alternate street has been the site of another cone zone, a zigzaggy maze of improvements done by the city. It's eliminate the flooding, brand new utility. They don't have to worry about water lines breaking, sewer line is not functioning. The year and a half long project, which also includes repaved streets and sidewalks, was part of a nine and a half million dollar bond package. Good news, this project is almost done. It's a mess over here. The end of it all can't come soon enough for Angela Gardner and others waiting on the wheels of progress to run their course so their wheels can get going here again. Some good news just drove down New Braunfels Avenue and a lot of those cones have disappeared. Here on the bridge, we can see one small area that has been repaved so far, but there is still a lot of work here to be done if they're going to reach that Thanksgiving deadline. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Okay, thank you, Katrina. 540, and then there were eight. This morning, the House GOP is set to vote for a new speaker nominee today with eight lawmakers in the running. And it comes as the threat of another government shutdown looms in the near future. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, Republicans running for speaker will need to get 50% of votes plus one from the GOP conference or a minimum of 113 votes. Tuesday marks three weeks since the U.S. has had a Speaker of the House following the historic ouster of Representative Kevin McCarthy. We're going to have to figure out how to get our act together. I mean, big boys and big girls have got to quit making excuses and we just got to go get it done. Top House Republicans are pushing to elect a new Speaker Tuesday night, according to GOP sources involved with the discussions. We had some great candidates in there and we'll, uh, we'll go from this current group down to our designee and, and uh, I hope it's a productive endeavor. No legislation like policy bills and government funding bills can pass without a House Speaker. And if something isn't resolved by November 17th, the U.S. government could face a financial shutdown. Now we need to get this done. I think people just want government to function. And this is not, this is dysfunctional. The 118th Congress is the only Congress to remove a speaker and need multiple ballots more than once. And some Republicans say they've been getting an earful from their constituents. They just can't believe that we're this bad. I just got back from back in the district in Sarasota, Florida, and people are very worked up down there about that. They think all of us are, are incapable. I'm John Lawrence reporting. 542, 74 degrees. Recall alert about a dog food product that could hurt both dogs and their human companions. Plus how a popular pizza chain is changing its hours to cash in on late night cravings. And the chances of rain continue in our area, but for now, we're waking up to humidity and 74 degrees. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's 545 in your morning consumer headlines. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is alerting pet owners to a recall of Retriever brand dog food due to potential salmonella contamination. The voluntary recall covers TFP Nutrition's Retriever All Life Stages Mini Chunk Chicken Recipe Dry Dog Food. The affected product was produced on October 4th and 5th of this year and distributed in several states, including Texas. Now, there's also a risk to humans, especially if pet owners do not thoroughly wash their hands after touching this product. Pizza Hut is hoping to be the new spot for late night cravings. The fast food chain extending its hours at thousands of locations across the U.S. Many restaurants will stay open for carry out or delivery until midnight, some even 2 a.m. They're set to offer some late night specials. That's great for college students <laughs> studying a late night. Time now, 546 and 74 degrees for now. Let's see how Transguide is looking right now. Roads still look dry here in town, but we do have some showers out there, so some of you may have a wet morning commute. We're going to talk to Stephen and Mike coming up live right here on GMSA. All right, let's get a look around town here at 550. We aren't seeing any issues out there that would slow you down, but 410 at Blanco. We're getting busier now that we've get, we are getting closer to 6 a.m. 151 at 410. We're going to see a little bit more of that buildup that's going to take over our map, but not right now. Things are still pretty clear for you, just maybe a little bit more crowded as we are seeing more people wake up with us. Taking a look at what you can plan ahead of time, make sure that you know what's taking place here along US 90 because this could slow down your commute. Over here on the west side of San Antonio, we have that concrete work that is taking place. 
Now, this started yesterday and takes us all the way to the end of the work week, but that work will begin at 9 this morning and finish around 3 in the afternoon. So anyone heading in, let's say from Castroville, that single eastbound mainline closure could slow you down. This is from West Military Drive to General McMullen. But other than that, guys, it's been a pretty quiet morning as we are getting closer to that 6 a.m. hour. Morning rush is almost upon us, but I wouldn't say you need to rush out the door just yet, but I'm rushing over here to the desk to hang out with my buddies. So, yes. It's a brisk pace. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. I, I was uh, gliding over here. Maybe I should just say that. Yeah, you were gliding. <laughs> yeah. There's no graceful way to do it. That was quite graceful, yeah. actually. Oh, thank you. Yes. All right, humid. I mean, this morning is just almost identical to yesterday. There have been a couple of sprinkles around the area. We've got uh, two or three patches of uh, some decent showers, and then we'll have one or two of them around the area later on today. Beautiful uh, view. I love the kind of orangey yellow look of the sky right there. And you can see there were just a few small holes in the clouds here and there. That's going to be the situation again today. Right now, nothing but clouds and road still looks fairly dry. It may be damp in spots. Uh, a lot of this has been so light and hardly even able to pick up on on radar. Here's what it looks like on radar right now and in and around town. As you can see, we don't really have much out there. There may be just a couple little sprinkly showers. Yeah, a couple of them over there around uh, Highland Park, maybe over toward the, uh, the Frost Center and then further out to the northwest. We've got the the decent showers out here, and this is from Sabinal. You had a few of them right around Tarpley and continuing to go up in toward Lost Maples. Kerrville, you look like you're in, in store for some of these showers if they do indeed hold together. This one right there just to the west of Medina. And again, that's the, the most impressive thing we're seeing right now. But just to zoom out on the whole big picture, it's not much out there. Well, obviously, we'll take anything we can get. And this is going to be the situation for the next couple of days. Mid 70s, low to mid 70s on average and lots of humidity. And this flow coming in here out of the southeast just is not going to be changing. So that's why the humidity does stick around for the next couple of days, or I should say next few days all the way through the weekend. Got a couple of uh, scattered showers around the area. Temperatures are going to get up to 80 at noon today, and then we'll have uh, mid 80s later on this afternoon. All right, I want to take you through the next seven days on this long range computer model. Again, broad brush. There's going to be some showers out there tomorrow night. We've got this disturbance moving on through, so that's going to be a good opportunity for some uh, potentially heavier rain, especially in parts of the hill country in through Thursday. Then we go into Friday, a few more scattered showers around there that really taper off over the weekend. Watch what happens late Sunday into Monday. Better chance for some rain. This is going to be through the day on Monday. Now this particular computer model has this all clearing out by Tuesday. So that's going to bode well, obviously, as far as Halloween is concerned. Another computer model does keep more rain around in through the day on Tuesday. So it's still a, a wait and see situation. Now, as far as temperatures, as you can see mid 80s all the way through the rest of the week. And then over the weekend, lower chance of rain front comes through Monday. And yeah, this is one we've been waiting for only in the 50s on Monday and wet. We'll be back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA and breaking overnight, we are hearing powerful testimony from two more released hostages who were held by Hamas and are now home in Israel as the U.S. urges restraint and fears grow about a wider war. And the latest on the off-duty pilot who allegedly tried to take down a passenger plane. He is charged with 83 counts of attempted murder and is set to face a judge. You'll see that story and so much more on Good Morning America. KSAC community wants to remind you to roll up your sleeves and get your flu shot. There's one more chance to get a free vaccine courtesy of the Bear County of Bear County and University Health. That opportunity is Saturday, November 4th from 8 a.m. to noon. If you want to register, just find the KSAC community flu shot vaccine article on our website right now at KSAT.com. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, the Rangers run of the World Series continues after a huge road win against the Astros last night. The two teams they could they could face in the World Series still ahead. And up next, if you're looking to get into the spooky spirit, the San Antonio Public Library has you covered. Uh, you can have the most fun with your kids starting today. And checking Transguide. Roads are good here in town. Showers out there in a few areas in our Part of our KSAT 12 viewing area, Mike, has a closer look at the map coming up and a look at a forecast that includes a very strong cold front. We'll be back. Israel is ramping up its war against Hamas in Gaza. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, what the U.S. military is considering in the region. 
Also this morning on GMSA, Halloween is almost here, but more schools across the U.S. are saying no to celebrations. We're going to look at why still ahead. Warm and humid this morning with a few showers out there. Uh, quite a few are showing up on radar to the west of San Antonio. Mike will take a closer look as we are now officially one week away from Halloween. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you at a 6 a.m. on your Tuesday, October 24th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good Monday and on the way in. I didn't have rain, but I, I must have been missed because the windshield wasn't completely clear, but not enough for rain. A few sprinkles. Mike, I contributed. Uh, I took one for the team. I went and got a car wash yesterday and the guy even said, oh, sir, you know, it could rain in the next couple of days. Aww. And I said, that's fine. It's just my truck is filthy. So please. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take one for this. Thank you. We are not going to see anything uh, torrential. They're getting a couple of decent showers out in portions of the hill country right now, which is good news. We'll take anything. Uh, tomorrow night's a different situation, but yeah, warm and humid. Uh, you know, where you're talking about Halloween. Mm -hmm. I remember as a kid, it's like nothing worse than like a, a hot Halloween. Right now, it's not looking like the situation. Yeah. Just the opposite. It's looking like it is going to be definitely on the cold side for Halloween. More on that in a second. First of all, uh, the road appears to be fairly dry out there at 410. Maybe a little bit of a sheen. There could have been a couple of sprinkles that have moved through there. Here's the uh, the most impressive, I guess you could say, uh, showers from right around just about in toward Kerrville, just west of there, heading down toward Medina, a couple of little pockets. They're moving along in a fairly decent clip. So Nothing's just sitting in one spot. So uh, Kerrville, you're going to be seeing some of this rain as this continues to work its way up to the north. Then a few little uh, showers over here right around Castroville, just on the uh, Bear Medina County line. And we've had a couple of little sprinkles here in town. That's been about it. So just kind of watch it as far as the roads being damp this morning. 74 right now, low to mid 70s all around the area with the exception of uh, lost maples and of course plenty of humidity out there. Mold, ragweed, pigweed, fall elm. Everything's on the low side. The updated count's going to be coming out of course right around 730 or so. Temperatures aren't going anywhere this morning. We're going to be staying in the uh, mid and upper 70s, 80 at noon and then only roughly a 10 degree swing in temperatures from the low to the high. We are going to be on the above normal side. We're starting off 15, 20 degrees above normal. We end up four or five degrees above normal across the board with a couple of uh, scattered showers here and there. Plenty of clouds, a little bit of sunshine thrown on in. We are going to temperature wise keep the same temperatures all the way through the weekend. We've got a little peak of some rain tomorrow night when a system is going to be coming on through here. Then we got to look ahead to Monday. Big fronts moving on through as it's looking right now. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, any big or little problems out there? The little problems, Mike, like this stall vehicle right behind me. 410 right there in those westbound lanes. You see those flashing lights. Uh, as I mentioned, this isn't anything serious. We do have a stall vehicle reported, and at this hour, it only appears to be blocking that shoulder lane out there. So. That's a good news for drivers, but if you see those flashing lights move over or slow down like what these drivers are doing behind me, let's hope that Texas Hero truck could help that driver out and get them back moving on the highway. As we take a look at our map, there's not a lot else to show you out there. Just a lot of that green on the screen, which does indicate the roads are still pretty quiet now that we've entered 6 a.m. But I would say just plan your commute ahead of time. There are still plenty of spots that could slow you down this morning. If you are heading in along I-10 westbound from Seguin, thankfully you're still in the green with 28 minutes at this hour, 33 minutes along 87 northbound if you're heading in from Lavernia and for our friends down in Floresville, which should still be about a 28 minute commute. But as we get another look here, I'll keep a close eye on this stalled vehicle. Make sure you to check your vehicles before your commute gets rolling this morning. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. New details this morning on a deadly motorcycle crash on the city's north side. San Antonio police say it happened last night around 7 p.m. on Briarfield Drive near 410 and Callahan Road. A man was thrown from his bike after a crash in a ditch and died at the scene. So far, it's unclear what caused the crash. San Antonio teenager Eric Gondu Jr. is accused of evading arrest twice in the span of a week last month. The police department now reporting that he ran from police on September 2nd and 8th while he was out on bond in relation to an unrelated theft charge. The teen survived being shot multiple times by a San Antonio police officer in a McDonald's parking lot about a year ago. Right now, the U.S. is weighing its options to respond to Iranian-backed militants in the Middle East. As ABC's Aika Jachi reports, the White House is also asking Israel to delay its planned ground invasion in order to free more hostages. 
This morning, ABC News learning the U.S. military is weighing more options to respond to Iranian-backed militants in the Middle East after Israel ramped up its war against Hamas in Gaza. In an exclusive interview with ABC News, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin says the U.S. is ready to protect its interests in the region. We're going to do what's necessary to make sure that our troops are, uh, are in the right, uh, good position, uh, they're, they're protected and that we have the ability to respond. The White House accusing Iran of actively facilitating rocket and drone attacks on U.S. military bases in the region, from Syria to Iraq and beyond. I don't believe that uh, Hezbollah uh, leadership does want to get involved, but ultimately, they're going to get a lot of guidance from Iran. The Biden administration has advised Israeli officials to consider delaying its ground invasion in order to secure the release of more hostages. This dramatic video showing the moment two elderly Israeli hostages, 85-year-old Yoshev Lifshitz and 79-year-old Nurit Kupfer, were released, arriving at the border between Gaza and Egypt. The U.S. says efforts are ongoing to secure the release of 10 Americans and about 200 other hostages still being held. This as humanitarian aid into Gaza is still trickling in. At Egypt's Rafah border crossing, a relatively small amount of aid, just 20 trucks, getting into Gaza for the third day. Hundreds more trucks filled with badly needed water, food and medicine waiting to be cleared. Israeli Defense Forces say three Hamas deputy commanders were killed overnight after troops carried out an attack in what they're calling a military compound owned by Hezbollah. The IDF says the attack was in response to launches from Lebanon. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. In some other morning headlines, chilling stories emerging from Louisiana after a deadly 100 car pileup that killed at least seven people happened Monday morning on I-10 and the aftermath was streamed on Facebook Live. The fiery collision being blamed on smoke from marsh fires and thick fog. Dozens of people were taken to the hospital and crews shut down the interstate for hours to clean up all the wreckage. Meanwhile, an off-duty airline pilot is being charged with 83 counts of attempted murder accused of trying to shut off a plane's engines by pulling the fire extinguisher handles on an Alaska Airlines flight. The plane was scheduled to fly from Washington State to San Francisco before it diverted late Sunday to Portland. A federal official says the suspect was overwhelmed by the flight crew and subdued and then handcuffed to a seat. As we approach Halloween, more schools across America are saying not so fast when it comes to celebrating. The principal of one elementary school in New Jersey says in one recent year, up to 90 kids were not able to participate in Halloween due to financial reasons. So the school did away with it. And now the entire district is moving away from the spooky holiday, which means no more costumes in the classroom during school hours. Students come, they decorate pumpkins. It's just a great time for families to get together and celebrate the fall and our community. I know some parents can't afford to get, you know, um, costumes, especially if you have multiple kids. I think it's good, it's inclusive, and I think all the kids enjoy it. Now, schools in Massachusetts and Michigan have also moved away from Halloween celebrations. As for that New Jersey school district, Halloween events will still be allowed on school grounds as long as they're held after school. And happening today here at home, the San Antonio Public Library wants to help you and your family get into the spooky spirit with Halloween parties and events. Today from 4 to 7 p.m., the San Pedro Branch Library on 1315 San Pedro Avenue is hosting a Monsters and Makeup event. Families can learn how to use makeup and prosthetics for special effects, which is perfect for those wanting to dress up and wear monster-like makeup for Halloween this year. Land of Branch Manager Kiana Stevens says the library is a space where everyone is welcome. The library is a space for everyone. Everyone is welcome here and we try really hard to make sure that there are things going on for all ages. So the Halloween fun doesn't stop today. Events will be hosted from now until October 31st. For a list of all of those events, you can head over to our website at kset.com. Approaching 10 minutes past the hour, 74 degrees. And still to come on GMSA, you can now sign into your Amazon account without using your password. How it all works coming up before 6.30. Plus important medical news just ahead, what you need to know about vein and lymphatic disease. And a look out there with live cam. We are humid today, this Tuesday morning, but next Tuesday is going to look a lot different for Halloween. We're going to be checking in with Mike for all those details coming up.